So hello, good morning. So who are you? Hi, good morning. My name is Marika and I'm uh, the managing director of One Planet Crowd. And One Planet Crowd is a crowdfunding platform in the Netherlands. So I interviewed Martin, your colleague, about a year ago. For, for people who don't know what, what One Planet Crowd is, uh, what is it? One Planet Crowd is a crowdfunding platform specifically aimed for uh, projects and companies with a sustainable or social impact. So we offer crowdfunding services ranging from donations, rewards, loans and convertible loans to companies that have, uh, have a positive impact on the world. So and what's the background of the uh, platform? So uh, who started it and why? Yeah, the platform was started uh, by my colleague Maarten de Jong, who you've spoken before, uh, together with Laura Rosenboom and Koura de Vries from Start Green Capital. That's a venture capital firm specifically, specifically focused companies with uh, renewable uh, companies in the renewable energy sector and uh, well they, they saw uh, around 2012 they saw that crowdfunding became more and more popular and they thought it was an interesting way to to uh, also be able to fund companies that are in an earlier stage than the companies they could fund with their funds they manage by via start green so they decided they wanted to start a crowdfunding platform and they asked martin my colleague to to start a platform Okay, and, and how many people are there now working with uh, One Planet Crowds? Um, we are with four, five, and we hopefully we hired one new person this morning. Um, people that are working for One Planet Crowd, and we almost always have around uh, three uh, interns as well, most of the time. Yeah. Okay, so that's quite a big organization for a platform. Yeah, well, no, I think if you compare it to other platforms, it's not that big, actually. I think there are platforms that have a, a, a bigger... Uh, team uh, working for them and uh, we're growing very fast we're, we're at the moment we are hiring also and we're searching for a new relationship manager in order to keep up with uh, keep up with the growth and not all these people are working full-time we've got some people that are on the support side that are working for us and for start green capital so that that makes the team a little bit uh, different um, deep little bit different than five yeah okay Okay, but I think it, it's also a really good combination to make also use of the, of, of the resources of, of Start Green, uh, of course. And you say you're growing really fast. Uh, how did it come? Well, I think um, I think there are two two more two important things that that uh, why we grow. It's one, it's because of the, the market itself. The crowdfunding market is growing very rapidly. Uh, the market is doubling every year. Uh, and we are growing even faster. We are at the moment doubling every half a year our, uh, uh, the amount invested in the project. So, um, yeah, that's a good sign. And, 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 and uh, which part of the, uh, of the investors is a fixed uh, group of, 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 of uh, investors of Farm Planet Crowd? And which part of the group of investors is new that comes with every project with the friends, families and fools? Well, uh, we already have around 15,000 active investors at the moment in our platform, uh, and it depends. You see, with the rewards, uh, you've got more one-off investors. They just know the person that is crowdfunding, or they think it's a, it's a cool product. That's, a, that's around 20%. But we see with loans and convertible loans that uh, around uh, 50%, a little bit less than 50%, is coming from our own crowd uh, of the funding uh, they raise at the moment. And that's, that's, that's in increased a lot in the uh, last couple of years. Okay, cool. And in other way, do you also uh, uh, take your responsibility as a platform of uh, protecting the investors in not investing too much, but also uh, really uh, being aware on the risk of their investments? Yeah, well, we try to edit, we try to, we educate the investors by providing a lot of information on our platform on, on the different products we have and how they work. Uh, and they're protected uh, if they um, if they invest a certain amount or higher a higher amount of money at, at our platform. We also uh, ask them to um, do a test. Uh, that's only with the loans and convertible loans. So only with the financial products for rewards it's, and donation. You don't really need to protect the investor. They just buy a product. Different regulation uh, is applicable there. But for loans and convertible loans. Uh, we uh, let them do a test uh, and test them with certain questions in order to see if they understand the product and then if they understand what they're doing. And if not, if they don't pass the test, uh, they're not allowed to invest more. 
uh, but say with the with the uh, pre-sales, uh, they buy something, but where you, where you look legally, they're not buying some really something. So so there is always still a risk for the investor or the person. That's true, and we do mention that risk as well. Like what we do for financial products as well, we've got a lot of times on the website before people invest. We do say with rewards as well. For uh, keep in mind that there might be a chance that between your payment and uh, when they have to deliver the product, the company might go bankrupt or it doesn't work out for what reason. Um, but you don't see that that often because it's a pre-sale most of the time, so the risks are much lower. Yeah, that's right. And um, I, uh, I think you were, were also one of the first platforms in the world uh, with the convertible loans. Uh, can you explain something more about uh, what, it, what it is for people who don't, who don't know what it is? Uh, well, a convertible loan is a loan you can convert into shares. So um, it's a loan at our platform, it's a loan of five years, but within three years the entrepreneur has to offer its investors the opportunity to convert the loan that they offered into shares um, of the company. And that moment arises when there is another, com another investor willing to invest a big amount and willing to pay some uh, big amount for the shares of the company. Um, and we always say that this is a very suitable instrument for startups um, because you, um, uh, um, it's difficult to decide what's the word, what's the, the real value of a company and decide what the shares are worth if the company is just starting out. Um, but if you see that there's somebody really willing to pay that price, an investor that really looked at the company and sees its worth, then that's the best indication of what your company is worth. It's comparable to selling your house. If you want to know what's the real value of your house, and it can fluctuate over time, but you only know the real value the moment somebody is willing to pay a certain amount uh, for your house. So that's, that's what happens when an investor steps in and then uh, the crowdfunders have the opportunity to stick with a loan and get their interest rate and, uh, re and uh, input back or to convert their loan into shares. And um, we only offer this type of financing for fast growing companies. Uh, so it's very interesting to convert your loan into shares with a discount and hopefully this company will grow uh, in the years coming and you will earn a nice amount of money. Uh, so are there already uh, companies that converted from yeah. the platform? Yeah, we already had uh, Empix Power converted already and Snapcar is now um, at this moment is working on the conversion. Yeah, and did the conversion offer to their, to their investors, investors for the first round and they just finished their second round. Yeah, so we see some companies that are already offering um, yeah, the conversion to their investors. Yeah. Okay, cool. And 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 uh, which part of the of the crowd uh, really uh, m uh, convert their loan into into equity? Up till now, it's really a big percentage. It's around ninety percent or so, uh, 80, 90 percent that uh, chooses to convert. It. I think it's around ninety percent that com chooses to convert the the loan into okay. shares. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's also quite logical because the the investment rates are not really this high, so it's also the risk. Uh Most of the time, the investment rates are a little bit, uh, the, the the interest rates are a little bit lower on a convertible loan. The upside should be also in in your shares becoming worth, becoming uh, increasing worth over the time. Yeah, and that's also you get your discount. You you get a discount on on the share price the new investor pays, um, and this makes it more attractive as well. As well. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and uh, at what way can people uh, sell their shares uh, and get profit from them? Uh, is it also when there is a next round or how, how does, it, uh, how does it, that, that, that works? Um, if, if they have shares after the conversion moment, if they have shares, yeah, well, that's still, that's still part of the crowdfunding market that needs to be developed. Uh, depends, sometimes, they, um, they, um, sometimes the entrepreneur or new investor wants to buy the shares back from the crowd. Or, um, well, at some point you maybe get an IPO, but it's a new market still. So we didn't get to that point yet at the moment that there was an exit. We now had the conversion in a couple of, uh, for a couple of projects. So it could be, yeah, you've got a different exit scenarios you can think of. Maybe sometimes the entrepreneur maybe buy, buys the shares back if the company grew uh, more, if they earn more money. Or the new investor, a bigger investor doesn't want to deal with a whole crowd so they think okay we will buy uh, buy the shares back or well yeah. maybe at some point the the 
company grows very fast and we'll do an IPO and we'll go to the stock exchange and you can sell them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm really curious about what, uh, what will happen then because I also did some events myself in Simbit, uh, f uh, and it's an equity-based uh, crowdfunding platform. And behind the scenes, there are quite some investors not really happy because they say, "Okay, when can I sell uh, sell my shares?" Because I, I I want to get rid of them. So I, I'm I'm really curious uh, how long it will take till it's, it's it will also be possible uh, to to sell. And but you're really operating in 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 a really a, a niche market. And it makes you special, of course, because there are quite some crowdfunding platforms in the Netherlands. But it's also a challenge because you really have to yeah, make some money also to pay all the costs you make of the five or six employees uh, that, you, uh, that you have. So in what way do you plan your growth uh, to also really, yeah, to really build your own sustainable model for the future? Yeah, well, that's, that's indeed what you say. I think for us, uh, we, we, we really decided that for the future, the, our focus is going to be more and more also on loans and convertible loans. So the reward it should be uh, the rewards and donations. Um, 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 yeah, we will we will still do this, but uh, we will focus more on loans and convertible loans because you've got bigger bit, bigger projects. Um, yeah, because you wor we work with a success fee in the end. So if you raise more money, it will also uh, earn a little bit more money. So that's that's one uh, one of the growth strategies. And on the other hand, we're also focusing now on really building partnerships with partners that can uh, that have deal flow and can do part of the analysis for us because they want to go invest or uh, in that way um, are interested in the company or want to invest in a later stage. So really looking at that as well in order to uh, yeah um, make the workload for our team as, as, as small as possible, but um, well at the same time still uh, reach enough get enough deal flow in order to to be able to 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 grow f still manage to to grow faster no, not grow faster sorry to keep on growing okay and you also want to that is also uh, starting in other countries so you also started in in, in germany i read uh, about in, uh, last year december of, no of november and uh, are there also plans for other countries yeah, indeed. Well, the main focus for now this year will be on, on the Netherlands and Germany and, and roll out our uh, business uh, business here and improve our, our services to both investors and uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, but we have plans indeed to, to go to Scandinavia somewhere in 2016. Yeah. Okay, cool. And, 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 and like Germany, uh, uh, what are your main... or, or uh, are there many differences between the Dutch and the German markets, the crowdfunding markets? Yeah, I think for us now the main difference is really uh, the, le the legal framework. The, le the, the legal frameworks are quite different for every, uh, for, for most of the European countries, um, which makes it hard to um, co directly copy the, the products we use here in, in Germany. Um, they have a different legal framework, so we can't uh, use the same products like we use here in Germany, so we have to to yeah um, modify them a little bit uh, in order to see them, to make them fit with the with the German regulation and also okay. be able to apply for the for the license over there. Yeah, and 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 and, and uh, uh, are they also busy with some European regulation? Because now it's really hard to scale up in different countries because every country uh, I, I I also know Belgium. Is is is, ter is 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 really terrible <laughs> with, with regulation, but every country has different uh, regulations. Are they also busy uh, uh, on European scale to say, okay, we're going to make some uniform uh, European regulations, so it will be easier for platforms to really grow in uh, in, in in Europe? Yeah, yeah, they're working on it. We are also very active within the European crowdfunding network and European uh, European network organization. I think that's one the most most important one. They are working on it and they are looking into it, but I will. I think it will take a while before there is one European regulation because I think most of the um, governmental organizations still need to get used to crowdfunding. They, they still find it a little bit exciting and it's new and, and every country handles it differently. And uh, like, yeah, the Netherlands is quite progressive actually. I think the, the Dutch government is, has quite a pro progressive approach, but if you compare it to some other countries, I think there are still some discussions going on on a national level before we will reach one uniform um, well, legal framework, I guess. They are working on it, but I, I'm, I'm afraid it will take a while. And, and what are the main discussions uh, 
that are going on right now? I think the most important one is the consumer protection. So in, um, in what way uh, and, and, and how far does the regulation uh, goes? I think um, you have to be careful that you don't put too much regulation on the sector because then you will end up like more or less like banks and the operations of the platforms becomes too uh, expensive actually to be able to offer smaller uh, companies uh, for that fee, the, the, this, this service. But on the other hand, um, you do have to have some uh, regulation in place to protect yeah, the, the customer and the entrepreneur. So everybody does provide uh, the correct information. I mean, only in the Netherlands, you've got 120 platforms at the moment and everybody handles it very different. So I think it's good that there is some uh, minimum requirements that a platform should adhere to also in order to uh, well, make sure that the, that the business, mm. that the sector in itself will be sustainable in the long run. Yeah, but uh, don't forget and also the, edu the, the, the education part for the investors. Uh, this, uh, the, the reason why I asked this question, I was in, in San Francisco. I had an interview with Fede Wiegerman, the, f uh, the founder of Indiegogo. And I asked her, her the same question and she said, okay, but in the end it's also really important to educate the investors because most people who are putting money into crowdfunding are, no, are not professional investors. So, they, uh, so uh, of course, from platform side, you really have to warn them for the risk and everything. But the other side, you could also really have to start making the investors responsible for their own money. Um, so at what way do you think that we can uh, uh, educate the investors more or better besides warning them uh, of the risk of the, uh, of, of the crowdfunding investments? Well, I mean, um, not only do, now, I think you should educate them not only on the warning and the risk, but also on the upside. I think you should edu educate them on the opportunities crowdfunding offers, but also on the risk, so they know what they, what they step into. Um, um, and how could you do it? Yeah, I think we, we, we're working on it also for, with the Brands Association uh, of the Dutch crowdfunding platforms. There's an association right now that's really working on uh, getting uh, people more aware of what crowdfunding is, because a lot of people use crowdfunding, but you've got different types of crowdfunding, like the equity, convertible loan, loan, and then you've got the rewards and donation. But a lot of people don't even know that there are different forms. So you really have to explain what types of crowdfunding exist and what the risks and opportunities are with each type of crowdfunding. Um, and you could educate younger people also, I think, maybe at a younger age on, on uh, how it works. But still, I think there, it, it will always be difficult. I mean, uh, you had the ice age. A lot of, even if you warn that a higher interest rate is, is connected somehow to more risks, there are still a lot of people, opportunistic people that are opportunistic and think, okay, well, I put it on the bank account that offers me the highest risk. So uh, I think that's a very, that's an interesting challenge as well to, 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 um, uh, well, to get this message across and make sure that everybody understands what, what crowdfunding is yeah. and how it works. Yeah. Yeah, I think because most people are really not really long-term focused. They only think about the short-term profit and not uh, on the long-term risk. Uh, yeah, I think but I think, risk. yeah, and you do, you do do it uh, if people really um, um, uh, invest more, a couple of thousand uh, euros or more, you do have to, uh, they have to perform a knowledge test. And uh, we ask them if they understand what they're doing. So we ask them quite some financial questions uh, to see if they know what's going on and what they're doing. Um, but yeah, it will always be a challenge to to know for sure that everybody uh, as there are, knows what yeah knows exactly how it works. I think if I look at our investor base and especially to the investor that invest multiple times and higher amounts of money, um, I think we've got a lot of people in there that really know what they're doing and they really like the fact that they um, besides putting it in a, in a at the bank or putting it somewhere else and somebody is putting it in. in companies for them, they can decide themselves which projects they like and, and which they don't and, and earn money while at the same time uh, spending money on, on companies or ideas they really feel like it's worth that they support them. Yeah, 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 I agree on that. And so looking at, yeah, yeah, I, I really believe that. And, and, and uh, yes, yes, they, they, they got quite some challenges. And when <laughs> And when you look at, 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 at your own sustainable uh, business model of the company, and also you, uh, you also got quite some investors uh, in the company, um, 
I think it's, 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 it's always a challenge for a platform, especially in a niche platform, uh, to make a, uh, a good profit. Um, are you already uh, making profit or, 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 or are you still investing in the growth of the platform? We're still investing in the growth of the platform, but we hope we are very, we are on our way to, I mean, hope in the coming year, next year to, to uh, yeah, well, to also have a black, uh, the black numbers. So we're now investing mm. still a lot of money in our, the growth of the platform and improving our, uh, like for example, we're uh, investing in a loan administration system for investors and things like that. So we're really working on the, the yeah, well, improving the, the usability of the platform for both the investors and the uh, entrepreneurs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. And and are there some 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 new things we can expect uh, in the near future uh, that you can uh, can share? Well, I, I hopefully we're working on, like what I said already, we're working on a loan administration system. That's one of our top priorities right now for investors uh, also to see what they invest in and when they get their money back. But on the other hand, also for the entrepreneurs to have a good overview of, the, of whom they uh, lend their money to and uh, when they have to pay back. So we're really investing in that right now. So I hope that will be ready before the end of this year. Yeah. Okay, and, and will this also be also accessible uh, through an a API? Like when people are investing in multiple platforms that they can bring this uh, data together? Um, I don't know if that feature will is, is in there <laughs> already, but uh, I think we're, we're working on it. I think it's still there, uh, we're working on making it as accessible as possible and also for people. Um, I will take the suggestion with me. Uh, probably Martin thought of it already. He's uh, in charge of the IT uh, part of the company, but uh, we are, yeah, I think if it's possible to connect these together, because you're, you're re yeah, you rely on other platforms as well eh, to make it, uh, make it happen, but uh, I think that that will be the future. I mean, I don't know if that will be in the first release, but that would be something you work towards, because uh, what, what you indeed say, you see a lot of investors that invest in different platforms, and I can understand that they want to have uh, an overview of the whole portfolio. Yeah, 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 I understand. Okay, thank you very much for the interview. Okay, thank and, you. Uh, and have a good day. Yeah, you too. Enjoy the camping. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> no problem. Bye-bye. Okay.